Hello everyone. Uh, very good evening everyone and uh, good afternoon to all of you. So today we are going to talk about the YouTube session of this hour, DNF block element 2. So welcome to everyone. Hello Sumit, Masumi, Divya Jyoti, Aditya, Meghna, Yashvi and uh, very good evening to all of you students. So <laughs> once again we are here to discuss about few questions based on the transition elements. You got it? In this session, we are going to choose in the previous session of this DNF block element, we talked about so many things about the transition element related to the D subshell element or D block element. In this class, we are or in this session, we are going to talk about questions from the lanthanides and actinides and what kind of questions usually ask in the NEET examination because both of these portions are important for the neat examination it doesn't mean that only you are preparing for the d subshell or d block elements you are not preparing for the f block element so that's why you have to prepare both of these you can figure out what kind of questions so welcome once again hello sharil hello uh muhammad tanvir manish sachin very good evening so let's continue <laughs> d and f block elements so right now students this is the <laughs> first question Name the gas that can readily decolorize acidified KMnO4 solution. This question related to the changing of color of KMnO4 solution. First of all, student, we should know what exactly the color of KMnO4 solution. Got it? So let me tell you the purple color. Purple color of KMnO4. So initially its color is purple color. Got it? Why? What is the reason initially? Purple color due to the presence of due to the presence of presence of MnO4 negative ions. MnO4 negative ion. This one. Because if you are going to form the aqueous solution of KMnO4, this is the KMnO4 and if you are just passing through the water and it will become the aqueous solution that will be K positive plus MnO4 negative. So these ions are responsible for showing the color. Got it? Let's understand it. What exactly will be the changes and how it will be decolorizes. If you're going to these are in the aqueous state, let's find out the oxidation state of manganese here. This is X. One oxygen shows minus two. There is four oxygen and the charge of compound is minus one. X equals to minus one plus eight and that X will be plus seven. So right now manganese oxidation state is plus seven, <coughs> plus seven. And students <coughs> in this, you are, let's figure out all these compounds A, B, C, D. So manganese oxidation state is plus seven. It means this is the maximum oxidation state of manganese. This is the maximum oxidation state of manganese maximum oxidation state of manganese it means it means now manganese has ability to only reduce itself now manganese has ability ability to reduce itself to reduce itself hence it is a very good oxidizing agent hence it is a very good oxidizing agent very good oxidizing agent oxidizing agent it means student this KMnO4 is a very good oxidizing agent so definitely because its oxidation state is plus seven it does not have ability to further increase its oxidation state it means definitely it will reduce itself it means if it has ability to reduce itself it means definitely it will oxidize some other species. So we have to figure out out of A, B, C, D, which one is ready to oxidize. So let's understand it. Let's find out the oxidation instead of all the species. Okay. So this is A, SO2. Got it. A is SO2. B is NO2, P2O5 and CO2. This is the NO2, P2O5 and CO2 student if you want to in this case its oxidation state is x minus 2 into 2 that is equal to 0 x equal to plus 4 
if you are going to identify its structure then there will be like this one coordinate bond so its oxidation state is also right now so its oxidation state is plus 4 it means it does not have nitrogen does not have ability to form maximum bond so this is the maximum bond it means it is not going to oxidize if you are talking about p2o5 then this will be the x 2x minus 2 into 5 equal to 0 x will be plus 5 and this is the x minus 2 into 2 that is equal to 0 x will be plus 4 so maximum oxidation state of plus 4 is the maximum oxidation state of carbon this is maximum oxidation state of carbon it means it is not able to oxidize not able to oxidize not able to oxidize this is also maximum oxidation state of phosphorus maximum oxidation state of phosphorus it means it is also not able to oxidize not able to oxidize let's have a look this one its maximum oxidation state is plus 6 maximum oxidation state of sulfur is plus 6 sulfur is plus 6 it means it has ability to oxidize it has ability to oxidize it has ability to oxidize oxidize hence this gas passes through the KMnO4 solution then it will be decolorized this gas passes through passes through KMnO4 solution KMnO4 aqueous solution then it will decolorize decolorize so finally we got the answer that is option a we got the answer that is option a you can see here its oxidation state is plus 7 so right now students let's focus here and we have done this beautiful question based on the and this question asked in the need 2017 let's move on to the next question let's have a look the next question is hgcl2 and i2 both when dissolved in water containing i negative ions let's have a look students this is the container in this container in this container this solution is available in this container this solution is available like this this is the water water along with the i negative solution aqueous i negative solution this is the aqueous i negative solution you can say that this is the aqueous i negative solution in this is i negative aqueous solution along with the water what you are doing it you are adding in this you are adding in this hgcl2 hgcl2 and i2 both so what happened students let's have a look this is the hgcl2 if you are adding in this then this is i negative this is 4 i negative it will convert into hgi4 2 negative got it and this i2 combines with the i negative that will be i3 negative so that's very simple so right now <coughs> we can easily right now we can easily understand this and that's why the correct answer is option b hgi4 2 negative and i3 negative so these things that we have done it <coughs> let's move <coughs> to the next one after that these things that we have done it question number this question also asked in the 2017 right now students we are moving towards the next question let's have a look this next question that is which one of the following statement related to length and heights is incorrect you have to find out the incorrect statement students europium shows plus two oxidation state that is absolutely fine it means 
once again let me tell you whenever question is related to the negative sense whenever question is related to the negative sense then you have to just make underline this negative sense it means this acknowledge you that you have to identify the wrong statement because most of the time most of the time we are in the habit to find out the correct answers so that's why this should be in your habit and let's find out europium europium shows plus 2 oxidation state that is absolutely fine there is no doubt the basicity decreases as the ionic radius decreases from praseodymium to lutetium this is also true statement all the lanthanides are much more reactive than aluminum much more reactive than aluminum students what happens as the atomic number increases you can say that few initial members initial members of lanthanoids or lanthanides are few initial member of lanthanides are reactive similar to the calcium similar to the calcium calcium but as the atomic number increases as the atomic number atomic number increases atomic number increases then the atomic size decreases atomic size decreases due to lanthanide contraction due to lanthanide contraction lanthanide contraction as the result reactivity of the elements also decreases as the result reactivity of the elements reactivity of the elements also decreases reactivity of the elements also decreases so what happen is students this lanthanide contraction lanthanoids are from atomic number 57 to 71 so 57 is lanthanum and this is lutetium got it so what happen as you are increasing the atomic number increasing the atomic number there is poor shielding effect of 4f subshell there is poor shielding effect of 4f subshell due to due to poor shielding effect poor shielding effect of poor shielding effect of 4f subshell 4f subshell <laughs> the reactivity will be slow or the reactivity will be lesser than the calcium and almost equivalent to the aluminum 4f subshell and the reactivity of metals will be low will be low or similar to the aluminiums not greater than the aluminiums similar to the aluminiums aluminium <laughs> so that's why students all the lanthanides it is given that all the lanthanides are much more reactive than aluminium this statement is not the right statement this statement is the wrong statement that all the lanthanides are not much more reactive only few elements initial elements are very much reactive yes <laughs> let's have a look so finally this is the our correct answer so we have done this lanthanides few lanthanides are more reactive than the aluminum but as you are increasing the atomic number that 57 lanthanum to the 71 that is lutetium then there is poor shielding effect of 4f subshell due to this outermost subshell or outermost electrons are strongly attracted towards the nucleus that's why atomic radius decreases and outermost electrons is strongly bounded towards the nucleus hence the reactivity will be little bit slower down not more than the aluminum so this answer is correct one option d you can also figure it out cerium having the plus 4 solutions are widely used as oxidizing agent definitely because this is the plus 
maximum oxidation state of cerium this is the maximum oxidation state of cerium and whenever any species acquire its maximum oxidation state so it means after achieving the maximum oxidation state it will have only tendency to reduce itself and you know that students that those species which have ability to reduce itself definitely they will oxidize some other species and behaves like the oxidizing agent so that's why <coughs> that we have done it let's move on to the next question <coughs> next question is gadolinium belongs to 4f series that is also fine that's very good so if you are talking about gadolinium its atomic number is also given to you so much easy things that is given to you which of the following is the correct electronic configuration of gadolinium so this question asked in the <coughs> this question asked in the 2015 neat examination so this is the symbol gadolinium its atomic number 64 and student this is the easiest question in the world i don't think so you will take a lot of time so this is the xenon xenon 54 and there is 4f there is 5d there is 6s 6s2 5d1 and 4f7 why there is 5d1 because 4f7 is half filled configuration and half filled configuration is maximum stable 1 2 3 4 5 One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and this is the five D one, and this is six, six S two N. So this is completely filled, and this is half filled. That's why the one electron shifted in the D subshell. Half filled configuration is more stable. Half filled F four F orbitals provides stability. stability so that's why this will be our correct answer very simple question not a very big deal <clears throat> let's talk about the next question <clears throat> next question is <clears throat> reason of lanthanide contraction student what happen contraction contraction means something is decreasing something is squeezing got it lanthanide means it is talking about 4f subshell similarly you can also talk about actinoid actinoid it is due to the 5f subshell only difference in the subshell a lanthanide contraction this is lanthanide contraction due to presence of 4f subshell and actinoid contraction actinide contraction due to presence of 5f subshell nothing much more what happen is students <coughs> what happen 4f subshell if you are talking about s subshell p subshell d subshell and f subshell f subshell d and f subshell are in very larger in size if you are comparing d and f then f is more larger in size as compared to the d subshell both d and f subshell due to larger in size they have very poor screening effect A screening effect means charge field lines are originating from the nucleus so these d and f subshells electrons are not able to shield that charge so these these field lines can easily reaches to the outermost electron by can easily passing through these d and f subshell so this is the meaning of screening effect similarly what happens <coughs> if you are talking about let's talk about the lanthanide contraction answer comparison if you if you want to talk about the comparison we will do comparison later on first understand what is the meaning of lanthanide contraction so step by step you will understand each and every point so what happen is students f subshell is bigger in size f subshell is bigger in size bigger in size due to this due to this screening 
constant is very low or screening effect is very low as the result outermost electron experiences more effective nuclear charge from the nucleus as the result outermost electron experiences more experiences more effective nuclear charge effective nuclear charge from the nucleus hence outermost subshell due to this what happened hence outermost subshell outermost subshell attracted towards the nucleus towards the nucleus as the result as the result atomic size decreases by regular increasing the atomic number regular increasing the atomic number increasing the atomic number is known as lanthanide contraction very simple is known as lanthanide contraction it means students if you are talking about if you are moving atomic number 57 to lutetium 57 58 and this 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 to lutetium then what happen atomic size regularly decreases due to lanthanide contraction and lanthanide contraction arises due to the poor shielding effect of 4f subshell 4F subshell is very much bigger in size. Its a screening effect is very low. That's why outermost electron experiences more nuclear charge from the nucleus. Electron is negatively charged. Nuclear charge is positively charged. Definitely there will be attraction. So the outermost subshell that is slightly shifted towards the nucleus and atomic size decreases. There will be contraction in size. This contraction is known as lanthanide contraction. If you want to explain actinide contraction, same explanation only there is difference that is availability of 5f subshell rather than 4f subshell and if you want to compare both of these contraction then actinide contraction will be greater it means the decrement size in actinide series will be more as compared to the lanthanide series because fifth shell also will have it will be more bigger in size as compared to the 4f subshell simple this is the reason and right now you can see that students it is due to the negligible screening effect of f orbital so finally this a answer you cannot say that increasing nuclear charge the main criteria that is the negligible screening effect due to negligible screening effect nuclear charges increases so the main cause is negligible screening effect this question having very critical options so that's why the first cause that is negligible screening effect so that we have done it let's move on to the next question which of the following pairs has the same size fe2 positive and ni2 positive definitely they are in the same period same period not the same size different period and groups different period and groups period and groups not the same size not the same size we cannot relate them if you are comparing these two things zirconium and hafnium so students <laughs> zirconium and hafnium these are the <laughs> zirconium and hafnium these having the there is there is there is lanthanide series 
lanthanide series between zirconium plus 4 and hafnium plus 4 due to lanthanide contraction lanthanide contraction due to lanthanide contraction and what is lanthanide contraction we have already studied due to lanthanide contraction there ionic sizes are same ionic sizes are same so that's why correct answer is option c <laughs> very simple after that students this question i have selected this question because everyone knows about this question also ask everyone knows about that d block elements are very good catalyst why because they have variable oxidation state. Why they have variable oxidation state? Because they have comparable energy level orbitals like N minus 1D and NS subshell. Got it? These all reasons are there, but sometimes question ask related to these matching type questions. Got it? So students, few things that you very know about it, that is sulfuric acid. Everyone knows about it. You have started the P block chapter. So that's why you know about it. And we have done these things, yes. So sulfuric acid, it is in the contact process. So this will be the A. And ammonia, this is the Haber's process. So everyone knows about it. Sulfuric acid and the Haber's process. Everyone knows about it. But it's steel and sodium hydroxide. So according to this, most of the students confuse about that. Definitely steel will be the Leblanc process, but this is not the correct one, students. Let me explain the Leblanc process. Leblanc process is used to form the alkali soda. Leblanc process. It is used to form different sodas. different soda by brine solution by brine solution what is brine solution that is the aqueous nacl brine solution that is the aqueous nacl so what i am doing it students this is the aqueous nacl if you are passing through the h2so4 aqueous then what you will get it you will get the sodium sulfate na2so4 if you pass this sodium sulfate if you pass this sodium sulfate like this carbon then what happens it will give you na2s and this will be the 2co2 releases the co2 gas and what happen if you just pass this na2s to the calcium carbonate and what happened? It will be Na2CO3. 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 And this will be the plus SO2 gas. If you pass through this H2O, then it will give you NaOH plus H2O plus CO2. Or you can also write it H2CO3 sometimes. H2CO3. So you can see that all these are the so, uh, sodium compounds Na2SO4, Na2CO3, and this NaOH. These are. So you can see that students, Leblanc process is basically sodium hydroxide that is fine, absolutely fine. Leblanc process. So it means third will be third. So where is third will be third? C having the third. So C is third. So definitely.
so we were talking about these compounds let's continue we were talking about leblanc process so what happened student this sodium hydroxide from the leblanc process and steel will be the basimer process so students according to this the correct answer is option d basimer process is basically students for so long before time what happens in the initial days pig iron molten pig iron is used to convert into the steel is used to form the steel by the basimer process by passing through the by passing through the air oxidation of molten pig iron so this is for the steel manufacturing so finally this option d is the correct answer so in this chapter we have discussed these are the inorganic chapters so i just want to suggest you students for the inorganic chapters you have to study so many reactions but i just want to tell you that students if you are not able to re uh, remember so many inorganic reactions then you should remember these reactions like what are the reactant and what are the product suppose that uh, suppose that if you know that brine solution reacted with the h2so4 and form the sodium sulfate then further reacted with the carbon and gives you the sodium sulfide like in the language form you can yes like in the language form you can uh, re you can easily remember these data got it in the inorganic you have to little bit few things mug up but try to make a logic so that you can recall it once again and you can process it very 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 early because in the examination you will not get the so much a lot of time so that's why i just want to suggest you go with the ncrt in the need not a very difficult question you will get it from the inorganic chemistry go with the ncrt and go with the few previous year questions so that you can understand what are the important topic and where you have to put maximum effort got it so keep <coughs> practicing and do hard work and best of luck for your need preparation thank you bye bye